Hey guys, and V here, and in this video, we're going to create our own shape again. Uh, I did one in the past, a fallout symbol, and I believe the title of the video was My First Nuclear Symbol or something like that. Uh, this one's going to be a biohazard or biological hazard symbol. We're going to use an authentic original biohazard uh, symbol uh, to, for our template. It's going to be our guide, basically. There are a lot of ways to creating this. Um, my way may be very well complex and confusing, and I'm going to try not to confuse you and make this a nightmare. I want to make this as painless as possible. But again, who knows? This may be confusing as hell. I hope not, though. I really don't. Uh, I want this to go very well, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and straight into Photoshop, and this is the shape, but I'm going to name this real quick. Biohazard symbol, and this is going to be our template right here. What I'm going to do, though, is duplicate it and control I to inverse it or invert the selection so it's pretty much uh, easier to see. Now, most cases, if you zoom, if you search biohazard symbol, uh, you will most likely find the ones with the sharp points and a whole lot different, uh, meaning it's spread out more, means the opening, and it's more like that over here kind of thing. Uh, this one is the authentic original design, I believe, and it was in the 1960s uh, when it was made, and it was by uh, one man, I think his name was Charles Baldwin or something like that, and I found it incredibly fascinating. And the new or the more of the common ones you see are way different. I mean, they're still similar in appearance. The shape base is a little different. Uh, it goes to, like I said, a sharp point. Uh, really sharp. Here it's got a little square. Or it's cut, okay? And I like this one too. I like them both. And I want to ask you, what do you see when you see this? Okay, as a designer, if I had to recreate this, I would break it down. I see circles, a lot of circles. And here, these little lines right here, and even here could be a, sh a square shape, uh, a rectangular or whatever, just to draw it a square and cut through. Same with this. Uh, for example, what I mean by circles is one here, okay? One here. Oops. Let me undo that. One here and one here. Now, that's the base shape now the inner circles here one here obviously and here and here and these bars obviously a circle as well okay one there and one here and then the center okay that's it that's literally all this is had would you have known that before probably if you're really into shapes and stuff some people don't know how to break these types of things down and then you know what? I'm not going to lie. There's shapes out there that I still struggle with uh, trying to figure out how they did it. <laughs> so it just happens. And these just happen to be my forte. I love doing these things. Um, but what we're going to do is design our own, but we're going to use this as our guide. So in a, in, a, in a sense, we're cheating. Okay. Could we do it from scratch and not see anything? Probably. But this makes it easier for someone that's never done it. So and what I'm going to do is go ahead and put these in a folder. I'm going to call them references, okay? I'm going to make another folder. Wow, forgetting the S, okay? And I'm going to make another folder, but I'm going to duplicate it and put that in there. And I'm just going to name this symbol. Let's say symbol design, okay? And I may make another one. I may, and I may name this just uh, symbol welded. And it... Doesn't make sense, but it will later. I, I call it weld it. Uh, for example, if you have shapes in here, it just says merge shape components. It just kind of welds them together. That's how I see it. Um, so this is going to be our design stage. This is where we're going to start putting our shapes in. Uh, the thing is, though, we have to be very descriptive on what we put in here. Now, I am sometimes struggle with naming things, especially when I'm in the process of designing. I just want to go, 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 and I forget to... I just have trouble naming them, even the basic names. But I'm going to try to come up with creative names if I can for um, reasonable names, labels for the shapes that we put down, meaning like the the outer shape and then the centers and then the bars here or whatever you want to call them without getting them too confused with the overall design. 
So we would that way, if we needed to break it down, we can know we would know exactly where to go. Okay. So that being said, let's go ahead and take a dive into designing this. Okay. Now I will admit, if I used a pen tool, I could knock this out in no time flat and pretty much dodge the comp uh, the confusion that's probably going to come later. But I'm not going to, you know, push the pen tool on you on the fly like this because if something happens, it can be very confusing and there's better methods in learning the pen tool rather than just starting it uh, on a project like this. I'm going to take more of the building blocks type of approach and using common shapes, okay? So what we're going to do right now is tap the U key on the keyboard and I want to select the circle and I'm going to try, well, actually, I need to... uh get the rulers, I need to guide out my project, okay? So what I'm going to do, <clears throat> got the move tool here. I'm going to guide, put the guides here on the edges of the document real quick. Oops, not what I wanted to do. Look at that. I'm already starting off with a bad, uh, bad deal here. Gotta love it. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to guide out the edges of the document. Oh, hope that's not a bad sign <laughs> of things to come. But anyway, here we go. And what I want to do now is go ahead and tap, tap the U key on the keyboard. I want to put out some circles here. And we're going to try to guess the size of the first one. So I'm just going to, oh, yeah, sorry. I need to completely do the center as well. My bad. See, I'm already getting sidetracked um, with this whole situation. Now, the thing is, we're focused on the shape more than the document, really. So what I'm going to do real quick is put a circle. I got the U uh, shape tool. And I'm going to put a circle here in the center of this design, right in the very center, because this is um, going to be the focus point on uh, making the circles accurate to this uh, shape. So... I'm going to try to be as accurate as I can with it. And we're going to guide, put the guides a little snap into that circle rather than the document itself. So just like, well, if I can get it to work, just like so. Okay. That's what I want. Hide the guides for a moment. So we have this. I'm just going to name this center just like that. Okay. And I'm just going to uncheck that for a moment. What I'm going to do is just draw out a circle. I'm holding the shift key and then holding the R, uh, alt key. This keeps it uh, proportionate, basically. And scale it up somewhat big. I want to try to match the, uh, the main shape here of one of these circles. Let me even it with a document so I know I'm starting out right. And deselect. And I'm going to go ahead and scale this up because I want it to go on the edge. Of that so I'm not worried about the outside either right now I'm focused on this right here the edges of the of the shape okay so I'm going to keep scaling it up until I completely cover it something like that it looks a little weird at first but don't worry about it we are going to uh, straighten all that up in a moment I want to be true to the shape as, as well. So up a little bit more. Let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good. Now, as you can tell, there's a little bit of space here, but I'm going to nudge this up a little more, just like so, okay? It doesn't matter if we're going out the document because we're going to fix all that later. So don't worry about that. Now what I want to do, we've got our shape, our main size here, and we can hide it. What I want to do is just turn the opacity down, not hide it, sorry. About 40. I want to make sure it's close to the edge, but not going too far out of the edge like it's doing right now. And that's not what I want. So that's just why I turn the opacity down a little bit. So we need to bring our, well, that's actually pretty close. And it doesn't matter. This is going to be the shape anyway. It's the whole point is following the shape. And we're doing pretty good with that. So I'm going to confirm that and leave it like it is. And I'm going to call this top, top circle, and copy that name. And I'm going to duplicate this two times. 
nameless left, actually. Copy the name of both, and just name this one left, right, circle. Okay. Now I'm going to take the left one and move it right here, down here, just like so. Okay. Just like that. Another thing we can do is hold control and tap the A key and just go to the bottom of that one right there and then this one. So anyway, we have that <clears throat> in place and you can see how close we are in accuracy. But I'm gonna nudge it with the mouse key. I mean, sorry, <laughs> with the down and right arrow just once, okay? And I'm gonna do the same with the left one, just one time, just like that, okay? Now you can kind of see the form here with these corners where they meet, they overlap. And that's what I want. So the thing is though, it's gonna be a lot of duplicating. So I wanna make sure that we are not getting confused with this, okay? So what I wanna do is put this in a, oh, actually put that, yeah, put that in a folder and I'm gonna name this one template. Cause it's kind of going to be, and I'm gonna duplicate that folder. Okay, and just leave it like it is right now. And I'm gonna go ahead, hide these two. I'm going to select this one, so control. So just select it and then hold control and C, and then control and V, okay? We copied and pasted another circle on top of the one we have. We're gonna go to past operation, subtract front shape, okay? And now we're gonna hold control and tap the T key. And we're gonna go into these input fields here, make sure they're locked, and we're gonna scale it down, okay? We're just gonna match the center right here. Now, I'd normally put guides right here because it makes it easier, it kind of snap there. But once we get it in place, we can do that. But that looks pretty good. And we need to go down a little bit more though, scale it down a little bit more, we need to be as accurate as possible. So I'm trying to be dead serious about this because it bugs me if I'm not accurate. But we're probably gonna have to scale it up a little bit more. I can already see that, yeah. So let's scale it up one. And might have to go ahead and manually do it. Sometimes you just have to manually do it. So I'm gonna hold the Alt key and just scale it down. Just like that. Just kind of baby it, basically. I want it to be like I said as close as possible. About like that, maybe. And let's see how it looks here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. So about 69.54. It's an odd thing, but hey, it works. Okay. And I'm gonna confirm that. And what I'm gonna do is do the same things for the left and the right. Okay. But I'm just going to basically copy this one, I think. Yeah. Actually, what I'm going to do is activate this one, copy that, paste it into the left circle, just like so. It looks, oops, actually I did that wrong, so let's not do that. Let's select. Now holding control and selecting the inner, oops, selecting the inner circle, the little small one, okay? And I tell you what, I'm already doing this in a little bit more of a confusing way. So what I'm gonna do is copy that inner circle and delete it, because I'm gonna put that on its own layer, okay? I'm gonna paste it in there and just set it the same color. And don't worry about this, it's just because of shape uh, operations setting I had. And I'm gonna delete the mask. Sorry for that confusion, but I'm doing this so you can understand what I'm saying, doing. And I'm gonna call this one here, okay? I'm going to name this top inner circle. Okay. And I'm basically going to take that inner circle. It's already on this top one. And I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to name this one. Copy that. I'm going to name this one left inner circle. Okay. And again, it's very important to be uh, organized like this. It really, really is. Right. Inner circle. And what I'm going to do basically is go ahead, 
gonna hide the top real quick. I just want to minimize as much here as possible. So let me just go through and clear some stuff up real quick. I just want to make sure everything is less confusing as possible. So I'm gonna hide these two also. We're gonna focus on this one. What I'm gonna do is control click on the left circle and select the left inner circle. Okay. And I'm just gonna uh, align it with that circle right here, just for temporarily. And I'm gonna do the same with the right one. Control click on the right circle and then select the right inner circle and align it with that one as well. Okay, just like that. Now let's activate them back. Okay, we're gonna select our left inner circle and I'm just gonna basically nudge it down. And we're gonna try to get it as accurately as possible. I just, again, I just want to get as accurate as I can. And that way it makes the shape turn out a little bit better. At least I think it does. That looks pretty good. Okay. And now we can just control click on the left inner circle, select our right inner circle and align it that way. And then we can just pretty much move it over or nudge it over with our uh, control shift and then the right arrow keys until it kind of aligns with this one here and I think that looks pretty good <clears throat> okay it looks like a mess right now but I promise you this will go quite well <clears throat> once we get it like we want I'm gonna hide this I'm gonna duplicate this one as well okay and I'm gonna name this one and what I'm gonna do basically is all I'm going to do hide these right here not important this one is I'm going to copy that little the inner top inner circle I'm going to paste it into the top circle well if it would actually paste in there so let's do that again oh it's because I have it hidden never mind let's hide our grid our uh, guidelines copy paste and we're going to cut in there so pass operation subtract front shape okay and we're going to do the same with this one here like our left inner circle. I'm just holding control and clicking on the circle where you see it highlighted. Control C and then Control V, selecting our left circle. Pass operation, subtract front shape. Same thing with the right one as well. Okay. Clicking, going here, and just same exact thing. All right. So let's turn the opacities up on all of these real quick. It did or not? I don't know. Yes, we did. Cool. So I'm going to hide those inner circles. Yeah, no use for them, but you can kind of see what's going on. Looks a little funky, I'll admit. And what I'm going to do, I believe, is actually, I want to name this one template rather than this one here. Okay, I'm going to name this one layout, just like it is. Just going to leave it like it is. I'm going to name this one template, or template. Now, this can be very confusing, I want you to know. Hopefully, this goes well. But what we're going to do now is I'm going to copy the right and left onto the top circle. But I'm going to duplicate this template again. I'm going to name this complete or final. Okay, and we're just going to finalize it through here. What I'm going to do is select the right one and copy it onto the top circle, just like so. And you'll notice it cuts through some areas that we need to be cut. So copy the left circle, paste it onto the top circle. Okay, see that? Now you can kind of see it taking shape. Still looks funky. We need to take care of these edges here. And this get a little confusing the way I'm going to be doing it, but hopefully this will work. So I'm going to copy this uh, top inner circle. And I'm going to paste it into the top circle and cut. Hopefully this works. There it goes. See, it cuts right through it. And we're going to do the same with the, le uh, the right inner circle. Selecting it. Going to this one right here, top circle. Paste. Subtract front shape. Boom. There's our shape. Looking really good. I'm going to move this up. I'm going to call this. It's good enough. 
Now what I want to do is do the circles on the edge right here, these here, because we'll get to these in a moment. So what I'm going to do, select, let me check, yeah, select the center circle. Can't see it, but it's there. And I'm going to paste it onto this one, top or symbol, and subtract front shape again. And there we go. Now what I want to do is go ahead and hide the symbol design because we're going to go ahead and do this outer circle, these bars, I guess you can call it. So I'm going to bring my guides back. <clears throat> we're going to use the circle tool. Hold the shift key, click, drag, and then alt key. And we want to get it as close to possible as possible. The edge. Uh, my mouse is not being uh, fair today. My mouse is really causing me some issues. I'm going to go ahead and turn the opacity down on that so I can see. And that looks pretty good. I think that's pretty well, pretty well done. You see, I might manually adjust a little bit more. I'm holding the Alt key and just dragging it in a little bit, just like so. Confirm that. Now what I want to do, I'm going to call this uh, Center R's. Activate our symbols design folder, and I'm going to drag this into this folder, okay, just above there. Now, what I want to do though, hide that. So, make sure we're on our shape tool and selecting this shape, control C and then control V, pass operations, subtract front shape, control T, and make sure they're locked. Go to the inputs field here, the width and height, and we're going to scale it down. And we're gonna oops, and we're gonna try to match uh, the bars here on the sides, just like so. Okay. <clears throat> now that we have that, we're gonna go ahead and what I'm gonna do is duplicate the center bars. Okay, and I'm going to select the center right here, top center shape. Uh, Control C. Go back to our center bars here. Control D. And we're going to go to Pass Operation. And I believe it's Intersect Shape Asset. I mean, Areas. Sorry. I am getting tongue tied like crazy. And that now has the bar here. Okay. This is what we want. So let's duplicate. Uh, I'm going to call this Top, Top Center Bar. And we're going to duplicate it. And we're going to go up to Pass Operation. Merge shape components. And this is our official shape. Okay. And what we're going to do now is control C and then control V and then control T. It's going to be a lot of controls and um, hotkeys. And I'm going to just click on that crosshair, drag it down, zoom in here because I want it to be as center as possible with the center uh, guidelines. Okay. I'm going to hold the shift key and just rotate it just like so onto this one and confirm that. And we can do the same thing or hold control and alt click and then hold the shift key. So it keeps it perfectly uh, guided uh, even horizontally. See how it's not moving. So if I let go of the shift key, I can move it all over the place. But if I hold shift key, it snaps it perfectly. Uh, aligns it perfectly horizontally when you're moving it. Same thing works for vertically as well. So we have our copy here. So we can go to edit, transform path, flip horizontally or horizontal, and we can nudge it over holding the shift, control shift, and the right left arrow key. And then nudge, let go of the shift and just nudge it with the control and right arrow, left arrow key, just like so. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. And this is our pretty much our final bars here. And I'm just going to name this there. Okay. Now what I want to do, oops, go to our shape tool, control C, we're going to copy these bars onto our symbol. Control V. Wow, that one. Gotta make sure it's highlighted, select it. Now we can paste it in place and then hide bars. And there we go. Okay, now our shape is together. At least the best we can get it. So now what I want to do is fix the top, okay? And a couple ways of doing that, that if we want. I'm going to hide the 
the symbol and we're going to select rectangular tool and I'm just going to hold shift key, click and drag just like so. Okay. That's just what I want. And I'm just going to scale that in a little bit. Just holding the shift key and bringing that in. Same with this one. Just like that. Okay. Nudge that up. And what I'm going to do is just the same thing. I'm going to duplicate it. Bring it down to this side here. Rotate it. I think that looks pretty good. Firm. And draw alt. Click, hold, drag, and then hold the shift key. And then we'll go to edit. Transform paths. Flip horizontal. And looks pretty good. Might nudge it over once. Looks real nice. Now what we can do is move this up back into here. I'm going to name this. I will have no idea what the hell that means later. <laughs> and I do apologize. I just sometimes run out of ideas. So control C on the, um, actually let's, I mean, I'm just going to name it points. Okay. Just going to name it points. Control C, go to the sh uh, symbols, control V, and then subtract front shape. And let's take a look at how we've got it so far. Let's bring it, make it white. Not too bad. It really isn't too bad at all. It looks exactly like it should, minus the little spaces here we don't have done yet. But yeah, that looks really good though. It really does. I like it. So what I'm going to do now is hide these. because I'm going to do the center, uh, these right here. Okay. So we're going to use the same square. Just click, drag, like so. We'll bring the guides back. Control semicolon. Hold control C. Uh, control and tap the T key. Hold the shift key. And I'm going to click this and drag it all the way down to the center. Uh, guideline right here. Confirm that. Let's name this lines. And basically, I'm going to click on that using the shape tool. Control click, Control C, and then Control V, and Control T. And I'm going to basically click on this crosshair holding the Alt key and let it snap to the center of the guides right here. Hold the Shift key. Click and rotate to the left, just like so, okay? And we can do the same process. Oops, Control C and Control V and then Control T. And by the way, when I'm holding Control and then Control C, I'm letting go of the control and then tapping, holding Control and tapping the V key. And the same thing with letting go of Control and holding Control again and tapping the T key. It just makes it much more easier. And less problems. So here we go. Just dragging that. Let it snap into place. Hold the shift key and just bring it over. Just like so. And that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to just drag this into that symbol design folder. Okay. And bring it right there. And hold control and C to copy it. And then control V to paste it. Subtract front shape. Boom. Okay. Hide the guides. And I like what I have so far. It's looking pretty darn good, pretty close, pretty accurate. So what I'm going to do, though, is basically copy this folder over here. Just holding the Alt key, dragging over. Let's hide the symbols design. Copy this name, symbol weld. Delete that folder and paste it into that one, okay, over that one. So I'm going to delete all these hidden layers, every one of them, and delete them. And keep only our symbol, okay, our symbol shape. And I'm just going to name it NVDT biohazard symbol, okay? And what I'm going to do is go up to pass operations, merge shape components. And let's go through and look and make sure there's no problems here, like any shapes on the outside that shouldn't be there like little pieces may have been left over or something. 
So just double check because that could cause a problem later and really just not look very good either. It looks pretty good. It really does. I like how it turned out. And it's pretty close to the original, if you ask me. What I want to do, though, the cool thing is, since we've designed it and made it final, we can go here. Actually, yeah. Go up to Edit. Define Custom Shape. And I've already pasted, copied the name. So I'm going to paste it in there. Name this one. VDT. Biohazard symbol. Okay. And that's it. That's pretty darn cool. And save. And now we officially have our custom shape. And the cool thing is, remember me talking about shapes, and you can create your own custom brush. But you can make that your custom brush. Okay. Right here if you wanted to. So let's go ahead and save what we have. And another thing I might do real quick is put a background here so we can actually see our design. Let's use one of these colors here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my green color, my logo color, my branding, and I'm gonna call this a background BG. So I like it, and I'm gonna save this so we don't lose our work. Biohazard and save it. And I wanna save it as an image as well. And just so you know, I can uncheck the background and we can save that as a PNG and you can use that to upload somewhere if you wanted to do that. But keep in mind, it is black. So you'd want to change the color so it's easier to see. You want to just simple another color of some sort. Uh, you can always change it uh, to a different color if you wanted to do that. I'm just letting you know that you could if you wanted to. But I like the design, and I think it turned out pretty well. I really do. And hopefully it wasn't too confusing. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. And until next time, I will see you in another video.